Okay, so what we're going to illustrate out are what's called synapses. These are cell-to-cell -cell connections, or we could say cell-to-cell -cell junctions. So in order to have a synapse, we have to have two cells. So cell number one communicates with cell number two. So that site of where they communicate is referred to as a synapse. So what we're looking at are three different types of synapses. So we'll look at these illustrations that I did, and then we'll refer to the slide that'll show these uh, types of synapses. So the first type of a synapse is referred to as a neuromuscular junction. So the first cell is a presynaptic cell. The second cell is a postsynaptic cell. So in this neuromuscular junction, which is the first type of synapse, the presynaptic cell is a neuron and the postsynaptic cell is skeletal muscle, or it could be smooth muscle. The point is, is that cell number one, neuron, communicates with cell number two, muscle. So this type of synapse is a neuromuscular junction. The second type of synapse is when the presynaptic cell, which is a neuron, communicates with a postsynaptic cell that happens to be a glandular cell or a gland cell. This type of synapse is referred to as a neuroglandular synapse. So it's a neuron communicating or synapsing with glandular cell. Synapse number two. The third type of synapse is what's called a neuron to neuron synapse. So in other words, presynaptic cell is a neuron, postsynaptic cell is another neuron. This is why it's called neuron to neuron. So the first type of neuron-to-neuron -neuron synapse is an axodendritic, all right? So I have here your axon, all right? This is your presynaptic neuron, the axon of the presynaptic neuron, synapsing with the dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron. In other words, neuron number two. This is why it's called axodendritic. So the axo part is neuron number one, the presynaptic neuron. The dendritic part is the dendrite of cell number two, which is, again, a postsynaptic neuron. The second type of neuron-to-neuron -neuron synapse is what's called axosomatic, right? So once again, the presynaptic neuron is cell number one, and of course, it's the axon of the presynaptic neuron synapsing with the postsynaptic neuron, cell number two. That synapse is happening at the soma of the postsynaptic neuron. This is why it's called axosomatic. The third type of neuron-to-neuron -neuron synapse is, once again, the axon of the presynaptic neuron synapsing with the axon of the postsynaptic neuron. This is why, again, it's called axoaxonic, sometimes referred to as axoaxonal. It means the same thing. So let's now look at some images to where we can see these different types of synapses. Okay, so let's now look at some images of the synapses that we illustrated earlier. Remember, whenever we have a synapse, we have two cells. Cell number one communicating with cell number two. So cell number one is referred to as the presynaptic cell, and cell number two is referred to as the postsynaptic cell. Now, our presynaptic cell will be a neuron. Therefore, we're going to say that neuron is the presynaptic neuron. Now, the postsynaptic cell could either be another neuron or it could be another cell type. So for example, if the postsynaptic cell is a muscle cell, then that's referred to as a neuromuscular junction. And if the postsynaptic cell is a glandular cell, then that's called a neuroglandular junction, just as we illustrated in the previous slide. Now, what about if the postsynaptic cell is another neuron? So in other words, we have a presynaptic neuron synapsing with a postsynaptic neuron. Well, this is what this image is all about. All right, so what we're looking at is this one over here. So we're looking at a neuron to neuron synapse. Presynaptic neuron synapsing with the postsynaptic neuron. So let's look at this first type of synapse, neuron to neuron synapse. And we're gonna number this neuron number one. 
So this is my presynaptic neuron. And this neuron that's over here is neuron number two. So this is going to be my postsynaptic neuron. All right, so let's look at the axodendritic. So neuron number one, once again, is the presynaptic neuron. And of course, that's the axon of that presynaptic neuron that is now synapse with the dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron. That's why it's called axodendritic. The second type of neuron-to-neuron -neuron synapse is an axosomatic neuron. So once again, let's find my presynaptic neuron. And it's this one over here that I'm numbering number one. All right, so that's my presynaptic neuron synapsing with the soma of the postsynaptic neuron. That's why, once again, it's called axosomatic. The third type of neuron-to-neuron -neuron synapse is axoaxonal, which is also referred to as axoaxonic. So we're looking at this synapse right over here. So let's find our presynaptic neuron. Well, it's this one. You can barely see it, but it's there. All right, so once again, that's the axon of the presynaptic neuron. And look at where it's synapsed. It's synapsed at the axon of the postsynaptic neuron. That's why, once again, this is called an axoaxonal or axoaxonic synapse. We also know that there is a small gap that separates the presynaptic cell, in other words, the presynaptic membrane, and the postsynaptic membrane or the membrane of the postsynaptic cell. So in other words, here is my presynaptic cell, which again is going to be a neuron, and that's the axon of the neuron, and here is my postsynaptic cell, and that gap that we see in between is the synaptic cleft. Now, why does it say presynaptic membrane? Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is the membrane, right? That's the plasma membrane of my presynaptic cell, and it synapses with the plasma membrane of my postsynaptic cell. So that could be the plasma membrane of a muscle, the plasma membrane of glandular cell, or it could be the plasma membrane of an axon, the plasma membrane of the dendrite, or the plasma membrane of the soma for my postsynaptic neuron. All right, now, the chemicals that is exocytosed at the synaptic knot that is contained in those synaptic vesicles that we talked about when we discuss muscle contraction. So those synaptic vesicles are basically containing what we call neurotransmitters. These are chemical messengers that will eventually be exocytosed, and these chemicals are released into the synaptic cleft. So the example of a neurotransmitter that we've already discussed when we looked at the neuromuscular junction of muscle contraction is acetylcholine. So acetylcholine is one example of a neurotransmitter. And we also know that in order for acetylcholine, this neurotransmitter, to have an effect on the postsynaptic cell, which is skeletal muscle, it has to bind to the receptor. So where is that receptor located? Well, that receptor is going to be found on the postsynaptic membrane, right? The plasma membrane of the postsynaptic cell. And once again, since this is a neuromuscular junction, that postsynaptic membrane is the motor end plate of skeletal muscle. Okay, so the next two slides will go over the ways we classify neurons. So we're going to look at the structural classification neurons, and then the next slide will discuss the functional classification of neurons. So we're going to begin with your typical multipolar neuron. So this is what you normally see in your biology books or your AMP books, and again, we have models of this in lab. Now, why the multipolar neuron? It is because it is the most common type. It is very common in the central nervous system, and in fact, all your somatic motor neurons that control skeletal muscles are structurally multipolar neurons. So if we look at this multipolar neuron, you can see that you have your cell body, and it has many, many dendrites. However, it only has one axon. And of course, that arrow that you see pointing towards the synaptic knob 
also called the axon terminal, is the direction of the action potential. So we go ahead and put AP here. Uh, just to be clear, that, that arrow indicates the direction of action potential going towards the synaptic knob. All right, the next type of structural classification of neurons are what we call the bipolar neurons. So this one right over here. So bipolar neurons are extremely rare. So we don't find that in a lot of places. Where we find them are the special sense organs. So in other words, vision or sight, our sense of smell, hearing, taste, are, are bipolar neurons. Then the last structural classification of neurons are what we call unipolar neurons. This one right over here, all right? So our unipolar neurons, which is sometimes referred to as pseudo-unipolar, I will refer to it strictly as unipolar neurons. So where we find these are the sensory neurons of the peripheral nervous system. So those sensory afferent neurons that we went over, your visceral sensory and your somatic sensory, this is what these neurons look like, all right? So the neurons, once again, are structurally unipolar neurons. All right, now let's consider the trigger zone. This is important. So that trigger zone, which consists of the axon hillock, that conical shape structure, plus the initial segment of axon, combined together gives us the trigger zone, which we've already discussed. So that's the site where an action potential is first produced. So for our multipolar neuron, it's right over here, all right, right there. Now what about the trigger zone for your bipolar neurons, the rarest of neurons found in the special sense organs? That trigger zone is right over here, all right? Now if we look at that bipolar neuron, it looks very different than the multipolar neuron. In fact, let me go ahead and diagram that out over here, all right? So what, we're going, what I'm illustrating right now is your bipolar neuron. All right, so the first thing we want to do is identify where is the axon and where is the dendrite, because again, it looks nothing like the multipolar neuron, but make no mistake, it is a neuron. All right, so the cell body, of course, is over here. So what we need to figure out is what is traveling through what plasma membrane. So in other words, the fact that this is a graded potential, and I will put GP for graded potential, automatically means that this is the dendrite, all right? So this part of the bipolar neuron is the dendrite because we know that the graded potential will travel along the plasma membrane of the dendrite. And look at the direction of the graded potential. It is moving towards the cell body. Now, how do I know this is the cell body? Because that's the nucleus. All right, and then from there, we then find the trigger zone. So the trigger zone's right over here, all right, for my bipolar neuron. So that trigger zone is the site of where we produce an action potential. So the fact that I have that trigger zone automatically means that this has to be the axon, all right? So if I draw an arrow going this direction, I hope it makes sense that that indicates the direction of the flow of the action potential. So therefore, what are these things that I drew in little tiny circles? Well, that has to be the synaptic knob or the synaptic end bulb, the final destination of that action potential. All right, so let's now look at the third structural classification of neurons, the unipolar neuron. So once again, I'm gonna draw this out, right? So we're gonna draw out the unipolar neuron. All right, so once again, it looks very different than a multipolar neuron. So obviously this is the soma because that black circle that I'm drawing right in the middle of it is the nucleus. All right, so where exactly is my trigger zone? All right, ladies and gentlemen, the trigger zone for this unipolar neuron is right over here, right there. So I'll put TZ, trigger zone, meaning then that the dendrites are this, right? So this that I circled in orange, that's the dendrites. So that trigger zone is once again the site of where we produce the action potential. So therefore, I hope it makes sense, 
that if I draw arrows this way, then that could only mean one thing. That is the direction of the action potential. So if that's a direction of the action potential, then what is all of this then? What is this? Well, this, folks, is all axon, right? This is all. What I'm shading in blue is all axon. And therefore, these round things that I'm going to shade in green, those are my synaptic knobs, the final destination of that action potential. This is how our sensory neurons look like, right? They're not multipolar. They're uni. Polar. Okay, now since we have this and this as the axon, we need to identify the part of the axon that is before the soma and the part of the axon that is after the soma. So the part of the axon that is before the soma, that's the peripheral process. That means that is the part of the axon whereby the action potential is heading towards the soma or the cell body. Now, what about this part, this one right over here? Well, then that's called the central process of the axon, all right? So the central process is where the action potential is now traveling away from the cell body and heading towards the synaptic knob, its final destination, all right? So let's be clear. When it comes to the unipolar neuron, the axon, we have the peripheral process. That means the action potential from the trigger zone is heading towards the cell body. And then this part of the axon is referred to as the central process. That means that's a part of the axon where the action potential heading towards the synaptic knob or the synaptic end bulb. Okay, now the last image right over here, okay, Ladies and gentlemen, these are two variations of a multipolar neuron. I know it's hard to believe. It looks nothing like what you see in figure A. But the Purkinje cell and the pyrimidal cells are two types of multipolar neurons. Right? They look nothing like what you see in figure A. But make no mistake, they are multipolar neurons. So the Purkinje cell is found in the region of the brain called the cerebellum. So the Purkinje cell cerebellum. And of course, we'll talk about the brain later. While the pyramidal cells, which is multipolar neuron, these are found in the cerebral cortex. So let's write that down. Cerebral cortex. All right. So once again, these are two variations of your typical multipolar neuron. Okay, so before we move on to the next slide, let's look at the Purkinje cell and the pyramidal cell one last time. Let's find the trigger zone, all right? So where is the trigger zone of this Purkinje cell that is a variation of the multipolar neuron? If you answered right over here, then you are correct, right? So there's the trigger zone. Therefore, all of this obviously are dendrites, and those arrows going this way and going this way means graded potential. And this arrow going this way towards the synaptic knob is your action potential. Well, what about the pyramidal cells? Let's find the trigger zone. If you answered over here, then you are correct. So that's the trigger zone. Therefore, all of this are your dendrites, right? So that's all dendrites. So therefore, the direction of these arrows indicate the direction of your graded potential, right? And therefore then, if we draw an arrow this way, I hope it makes sense that that has to be the direction of my action potential. So we're just repeating this. I hope this is making more sense the more I repeat. Okay, so let's now look at the functional classification of neurons. So we have three functional classifications of neurons. We have the sensory afferent neuron, the motor efferent neuron, and the interneuron, also referred to as association neurons. So let's look at the sensory slash afferent neurons. Now, bottom line, they will transmit impulses towards the central nervous system. That's why they're classified as sensory afferents. All right, so we're looking at figure A. So structurally speaking, this sensory neuron is a unipolar neuron, as what we just discussed in the previous slide. 
So let's look for the trigger zone. And that trigger zone is right over here that I'm shading in black, all right? Therefore, folks, all of this are the dendrites. Now, we'll talk about sensory receptors later on. What we want to first focus on right now is the functional classification of neurons. So there's more to come. And of course, here it says the direction of conduction. We could do a little bit better. That means that's the direction of the action potential. And this part of the axon that I'm shading in yellow, that's the peripheral process of this unipolar axon. Now, what about this part over here? That, folks, is my central process of this axon of this unipolar neuron, all right? So let's repeat. Functionally speaking, this is a sensory neuron. Structurally speaking, this is a unipolar neuron. So that actual potential is going to arrive, and now it's going to synapse with what we call the interneuron. So you can think of the interneuron as the bridge between the sensory neuron that's coming in and the motor neuron that is delivering information away from the central nervous system going towards the effectors. All right, so let's look at this interneuron. Structurally speaking, this interneuron is a multipolar neuron, right? So functionally, it's an interneuron. Structurally, it's a multipolar neuron. So where is the trigger zone? The trigger zone's right over here. So that trigger zone means that's where we force form an action potential. So therefore, arrow indicates the direction of the action potential. Now, I want to go back and look at this over here that I'm going to shade in blue, right? This one right there. So I hope everyone agrees that that area that I shaded in blue or that I encircled in blue represents a neuron-to-neuron -neuron synapse. So what is the presynaptic neuron? Well, the presynaptic neuron is a sensory neuron. What about the postsynaptic neuron? The postsynaptic neuron is an interneuron in this particular synapse. So this looks like to me right there, that is an axosomatic synapse. Now, what about over here? What about that one that I'm encircled in orange? Well, that is an axodendritic synapse because that's the dendrite of this interneuron. All right, so now this interneuron is going to synapse with the motor neuron. And that motor neuron is a multipolar neuron. All right, and let's find the trigger zone. Well, the trigger zone's right over here. So therefore, it says direction of conduction. That means that's the direction of the action potential. Now, where is the synapse between the interneuron and the motor neuron occurring? Well, it's right over here, right? So there, there's the neuron-to-neuron -neuron synapse. So for this particular synapse, the interneuron now becomes the presynaptic neuron, and now the motor neuron is now the postsynaptic neuron. So structurally speaking, this interneuron is a multipolar neuron. In fact, most interneurons are structurally multipolar. Now, in this illustration, it is only showing us one interneuron. Please keep in mind that we could have several interneurons involved. The bottom picture that you see is also a nice illustration showing us the sensory neuron synapsing with the interneuron. And this is your spinal cord. So that's your central nervous system and then upon which it synapses with the motor neuron. And this particular motor neuron is a somatic motor neuron because the effector is skeletal muscle.